In this video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of a best fitting line. And so in this situation, we are going to uh, take some data. We're going to plot the ordered pairs for the data on the Cartesian plane uh, and create a scatter plot. And then we will draw a line that we feel that best fits that data come up with an equation for that line or a function, and then we'll use that function to make future predictions. So this is line of best fit, and we're going to do the visual approach. And how this works, given some set of data, we are going to create a scatter plot. Okay, so we might have uh, some ordered pairs and create some data, and we'll have some points. Those aren't very good points on the Cartesian plane. Okay, and then what we'll do is, given those points, we will draw what we feel is a straight line or a trend line through the data, something that approximates what the data will look like. Okay, so you use a straight edge and you'll follow the pattern of the ordered pairs that you plotted. Then, you will locate two ordered pairs on your line. And generally, what you want to do is you want to find ordered pairs that go through, um, you know, the, your graphing grid that give you really good points. So we might use, um, it looks like we've got a point right there. That seems to hit. We've got another point right there. So we will use those two ordered pairs, whatever they are, X and Y, Okay, we'll use those two ordered pairs, X and Y, calculate the slope, input it into point slope form, come up with the equation of the line. And then we will use that equation to make predictions. So here's an example. So we have price versus quantity. So calculus, the president of the math club, is in charge of the annual fundraising event selling t-shirts. He has done some research and has gathered some data from other clubs at the school that have sold shirts. The results of his research are shown in the table below. So we see here that if we charge the higher price we charge, the fewer t-shirts that we sell. Okay, so apparently choosing our dependent and independent variable, okay, the quantity sold depends upon the price of the shirt. So quantity depends on price. Okay, and of course we know that y depends on x. So that means price is our x and quantity is our y. So now we want to sketch a scatter plot using the variables and the data listed in the table. So we've got our ordered pairs here. And all we need to do is plot them. Before we can do that, though, we will need to put together a grid and plot our points. So we've got to label our axes and figure out our scales and do all that. So we know our x is our price. So on our grid, we can go ahead and write. This is our price and our quantity sold. Okay, uh, I've got about a 20 by 20 grid here. It looks our, like our prices range from eight and a half dollars to $16. So if we want, we could probably just start at $0. So one, two, three, four, five, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 20. So hopefully I've counted correctly here. So we've got our price. Each one of these hash marks is going to be a dollar. And then the quantity sold. Well, we go up to 125. We start at 45. Um, so maybe... Each one of these grids could be um, 
maybe 10, 10 t-shirts sold. So um, we're looking at, uh, that's 20 shirts. So 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. So each each hash mark is worth 10 shirts sold. That's going to be plenty big. It would be nice to be a little wider, but we're in good shape. So now we need to plot our ordered pairs. So at $8.50, we sell 125 shirts. Five, six, seven, eight and a half dollars, 125 shirts. That is a point right about there. At nine dollars, 116 shirts. So a little bit less, 110, right about there. Nine dollars and 75 cents, 101 shirts. So just under ten dollars, right about there. Okay, uh, ten dollars eighty-nine shirts. So ten dollars, just about ninety shirts, right there. Eleven dollars and twenty-five cents. Ten, eleven, twenty-five, eighty shirts. Okay. And thirteen dollars sixty-eight shirts. Thirteen dollars sixty, almost seventy shirts. So right about there. Fourteen fifty, fifty-six shirts. So right there. And sixteen dollars is forty-five shirts. So right there. So that is our scatter plot. Those are our data points. So now what we need to do is connect those points with a line. So we, we're really just going to approximate, you know, you've heard put half the points above, half the points below, um, but we're looking for some, some sort of linear equation, some sort of line that approximates the data. And then we construct the best fitting line. Okay? And we've got that. So now we need to figure out the equation of the line. Well, we've got a couple of hash marks that are on our line. And we want to use those. We have to use points on the line to come up with our equation. So let's see if we can find a couple of points that are, are cross-hatched. Um, not too much here. So I've got the one up at the top. Uh, we're really close here to this one. Let's go ahead and use um, let's go ahead and use that point right here. So I'm going to use the ordered pairs 14, 60, and I'm going to use the ordered pair is that 7, 130. So I'm going to use those two ordered pairs to come up with the equation of our line. Okay? So, real quickly, my two points, 17, 7, 130, 14, 60. We calculate our slope. Our slope is 60 minus 130 over 14 minus 7. So 60 minus 130 is 70, negative 70 over 7, which is negative 10 over 1. So I couldn't ask for much better numbers here. Negative 10 over 1, what does that mean? That means for every dollar increase in sale or in price, we sell 10 fewer shirts. Okay, so that's our slope. Now we plug that into point slope form and find the equation of our line. Y minus 
130 equals negative 10 times x minus 7. y minus 130 equals negative 10x plus 70. And we get y equals negative 10x plus 200. So that is our function. f of x equals negative 10x plus 200. And then we can use our equation to answer the other questions. Okay, the y-intercept, well, that represents when x is 0. That means when we give the shirts away, we can anticipate selling about 200 shirts or giving them away. If Cal orders 95 shirts, what price should he charge? Well, that means he's going to try and sell all 95. So in this case, we're giving you the y or the f of x, and we want to solve for x. So in this case, we would say 95 equals negative 10x plus 200. And solve for x. Um, and then if, if Cal decides to sell t-shirts for 1050, how much should he expect to sell? Well, that's the ordered pair 10.5 comma y. And in that situation, we will put 10.5 in for x. f of 10.5 equals negative 10 times 10.5 plus 200. Okay, and interestingly enough, we get 95. So apparently, we have to charge 1050 if we want to do 95. So we got, interestingly enough, we got the same same answer. We're working with the same ordered pair there. That doesn't happen all the time. We'll do a few more of these, and really where we're heading, I'll show you in the computer lab how to do this using Microsoft Excel software. So we'll see you in the lab.